All right, so in your mind, where are we at when it comes to quantum computing? In January, uh, Jensen Wong basically said it wasn't ready for prime time. He said now we're at an inflection point. What's the real answer right now? Is quantum computing, is it ready for prime time? In that sense, I mean ready for enterprise use. Yeah, look, I think we're already doing things in the enterprise space that has helped Jensen uh, see reality on this in the last six months. You know, at the March GTC event in Palo Alto, we announced a 12% speed up on computational engineering using our current generation quantum computers in partnership with ANSYS. Uh, and then earlier this week on Monday, uh, we made an acquisition, obviously, uh, of Oxford Ionics, which is, we think, market making and transformative, propelling INQ uh, into the leadership position. Uh, with the most uh, aggressive and progressive roadmap to do useful things in quantum every year between now and 2030. We also announced on Monday this past week a partnership with NVIDIA, AstraZeneca, and Amazon uh, AWS. And in that partnership, we, we talked about a 20x speed up in the workflow for computational drug design. And 20x speed up is very real, right? That's turning months of work into days. All right, so a number of partnerships. I want to go back to that acquisition you made of Oxford Ionics, over a billion dollars. I, I have to say, that's a lot of money for a company that's not yet profitable. Um, it seems like this is one of many acquisitions, actually, in recent weeks and recent days, and you're trying to consolidate. What is it that you're trying to consolidate right now? And this is an emerging tech. It seems like we're in the early innings. Why do you think it's so important to try to bring this company and other companies into IonQ? Well, INQ has always been the biggest public company in the space. We're effectively the bellwether for the industry. We were the first IPO. We've always been the biggest player by pretty much every metric. There's two pieces of our business that are both growing uh, nicely. Uh, our guidance range this year at the top end is not far off of $100 million of revenue. Um, and our quantum networking business uh, has advanced with acquisitions in the last year from Cubitech to IDQ in Geneva through to our LightSync acquisition uh, in Boston, and Capella, which is a satellite QKD company. Our quantum computing business, which is probably the majority of uh, you know, present excitement, but I think quantum networking is going to be pretty exciting uh, as the coming years play out. Quantum computing, we've been advancing with acquisitions such as LightSync and Oxford Ionics. And we announced earlier this week a combined roadmap, which we believe leads the industry. So the combination of INQ and bulk optics, plus LightSync and quantum memory, plus Oxfionics, who have this unique ion trap on a chip technology, allow us to not only get the most compelling unit economics in the next five years, uh, but allows us to, to effectively move forward those large little qubits that Jensen was talking about at a tremendous pace. We have uh, projected 80,000 large little qubits uh, by the end of this decade, the next five years. Mm -hmm. uh, and that allows us to unlock a fantastic range of new enterprise applications, not only computational drug design uh, and computational engineering in general, but there's more work in material science to come, more work in logistics, more work, of course, in cryptography. Um, and we're already showing early progress okay. in all of those areas just with 36 qubits. Imagine what it'll be like when you have 80,000 logical qubits. Well, well, Nick, you're really taking me to my next question. Um, you mentioned some of the, the drug applications. Some of your other customers are Hyundai, automobile maker, and also Airbus, a plane maker. What are the real practical applications for this? When you talk about medicines, that's, you know, that's science, it's research. For these industrial companies, what's the real applications for quantum computing today? So it's, a, it's, a, it's quantum AI, which is very much a narrow application of AI to industrial uses. You know, things like how do you learn faster with an LLM by using a quantum computer on the loop to improve yields in steel production? How do you do cargo loading uh, more effectively for Airbus? How do you improve, uh, you know, ultimately that top of funnel in the drug design process for AstraZeneca, how do you look for fault and anomaly detection across everything that General Dynamics is doing, for example? Okay. Um, so these applications are getting more powerful continually. We're already showing tremendous progress. It will be not just exponential, but doubly exponential every year from here on out as we continue to expand the power of our machines by a tremendous rate on a, on a generational basis. So All it's right. not just Moore's Law where you double every year. We're actually increasing machines by 100 million times of power okay in a single generation.